Hi, I'm Steve Halliday, and here's another short video on Raspberry Pi bare metal programming. In some of the work that we're going to get into here shortly, it's going to get pretty complicated as we're trying to tackle interrupts. And so before we do that, we want to put together some tools that are going to help us do some debugging. It's useful to start to create abstractions and subroutines and some tools and so forth, so you can use these to help you figure out what's going on as you get into some of the more complicated programming. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a subroutine that'll print out hex digits, which may be helpful if you're trying to figure out what addresses a register might contain or something like that. So think about, first of all, before we go on, what is the algorithm that you would use to convert a 32-bit value into a string of ASCII characters that, that represent the hex characters for that value? If you think about it for a while, you'll probably come up with something like this. For each of the eight nibbles in the 32-bit value, you're going to rotate the leftmost nibble to the far right so that that nibble can be printed out. Then we'll mask off all the bits except for the low order nibble that we just shifted to the far right. If that nibble is less than 10, then we'll add 30 onto it. This will make it an ASCII character on the range of 0 through 9 ASCII. If it's 10 or greater, 10 through 15, then we want to add 37 to it. 30 is the hex value for a 0, and, and 37 is the ASCII value for a capital A minus 10. <laughs> so if we subtract the 10 from the capital A, we end up with a value when we add in our nibble on the range of ASCII A through ASCII F. And then when we've done this, we've basically converted that nibble into a character, and so we'll write the character out, and then we'll repeat that for all of the eight nibbles. Here is generally what the assembly code will look like. Your assembler may be slightly different in terms of syntax, but the general form will be about the same. The name of the method, I've called it print hex, is here, and I'm assuming that register 1 holds the UART base address, and register 2 holds the value that I want to print out. So the first thing that I do is I push all of these registers onto the stack to save them so I can use them without worrying about tromping on some of the values that the caller may have put in these registers. I used what I called the push instruction, but if you look up the STM instruction in your assembly reference manual or your machine reference manual for the ARM, you'll see what I used to do this. Basically, this takes R3, R4, R5, and R14 and puts them all on the stack. And then I move the value in register 2 into register 3 because I'm going to use the write character method that we've had in the previous video, and that requires that the character I'm writing be in register 2. So I'm going to use register 3 to manipulate the value. And then I move an 8 into register 4. 8 is the number of nibbles that I want to print out, and so register 4 becomes my for loop counter, so to speak. Now I enter the actual loop here. The first thing that I do here is I rotate register 3 and I'm going to store this in register 3, I rotate it by 28 bits. So what this does is this takes the far left nibble and shifts it to the far right position. If I do this each time through the loop, I'll keep moving the far leftmost nibble into the rightmost position until I work my way through all the different nibbles in the value. Then what I want to do is mask off all the other bits except for that low order nibble so that I'm only dealing with those lowest four bits. I'll compare register 2, which remember contains the value that I've added in here when I did the masking. So this contains the four low order bits, and I compare that against a 10. I want to know if it's less than or greater than the 10. If it's greater than or equal to 10, then I'm going to jump to the hex digits section. Otherwise, I'm going to add 30 hex to that R2. This puts us in the range of an ASCII 0 through 9, as you'll recall from the pseudocode that I showed previously. And then I'll jump around this section down to print digit, because at this point I've got a character which is ASCII 0 through 9. If the value was greater than 10, now I will end up in this section here where I need to add 37. This gives us a character on the range of A through F. I add that to register 2. And either way, whether I jumped around this section or whether I jumped into this section and fell into this section, 
I'm ready to write the character. I have a character that's either 0 through 9 or A through F. So I call the subroutine that we used in the previous videos and print out that character. Then I subtract 1 from register 4. Recall that register 4 up here is my counter that started at 8, and so I'm going to go through this whole thing 8 times. I compare register 4 against 0, and if it's not equal, in other words, if I still have more nibbles to print out, then I jump back up here and go through this loop again. Finally, when register 4 is 0, I will fall through here, and I'll pop all the registers back. Now one trick that I used here, you may notice, is when I pop, I, I pushed register 14 on, which recall is the return address, and I popped that into register 15, which is the uh, program counter. This allows me to return from my subroutine. So there you have it. That's a quick little video on how to create a print hex number <laughs> so that you can use this subroutine to be able to help you debug in future videos.